Welcome back, all our 40K fanatics out there. I'm DJ. And I'm Lane. And we're here with Tim's Nation to bring you another Warhammer 40K Battle for Report. This is the third matchup in our Death Guard trilogy, preparing for a team event. Well, I'm not prepared for the team event, but I'm prepping Lane for the team event because, you know, I've been sort of a little busy this month. This month's been a kind of a kind of a crazy one. You <laughs> had know? some things going on. Yeah, yeah. Two yeah. things in particular. Yeah, two things in particular. I had to uh, cut the grass. And, uh, oh, oh, there was the babies, too. Yeah, the twins. The uh, twins. Uh, there remember. was that. There was that. Um, I had to recall the bathroom, too. So, yeah, it's been kind of complicated. But, yeah. no, but yeah, a little busy, a little couple things that have kind of kept me occupied. So, I will not be attending this team event. But I want to help my good buddy Lane out here, make sure he's ready to go for this thing. So, this is going to be the third matchup with the Death Guard. And then I think next week we'll probably start switching up. and It'll be my turn to start prepping some tournament lists. Sure. I also want to bring the Imperial Agents at some point. I'm going to put them on the channel. No matter how much I do not like the Codex, I will bring it to you, I promise. There we go. Awesome. So, yeah, that'll be some stuff to see. Uh, and uh, we'll leave this right now. Let us know in the comments section what you want to see, uh, what, which armies you'd like to see play. I'd like to try to start working with getting us a Discord set up, uh, something I'm not very familiar with, so that we can have votes and you guys can vote on what armies you want to see, what matchups you want to see. But we're looking to see what you want to, what lists and what armies you'd like to see played next week uh, from Lane and myself. Uh, not only one I will not yet is World Eaters. Lex, next week or last week, I'm still working on them. Been doing a lot of work at a lot of red, a lot of red and a lot, lot of gold. Of red. So uh, it doesn't feel like I'm getting that far, but it's like I'm working on right now the 30 Berserkers. And it's like, in one sense, it's like, oh, they're not done. And it's this stuff. But then it's like, I'm 30 Berserkers. And once I get those 30 Berserkers done, the Jackals, I'm just going to fly through mm -hmm. because they're just like naked dudes. Now if you're paying 30 at a time, yeah, it's going to feel pretty <laughs> Yeah, it really pretty does. rough for it really to go on there. It does. All right, guys. As always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do. Turn on the bell to get notified on all the content we bring you here on the channel. And uh, let's talk about the Death Guard for the third time. And I will... Props. Lane's at least made one change to the list every single time. Changed one model. <laughs> literally. Swap one Literally. One model. See if you can guess which one it is. <laughs> Pay close attention. All right, Lane. What do you got? Two Days Death Guard just has so very many characters. Of course, because I've got two 10-man bricks of Plague Marines. I've got to have two Foul Blight Spawns and two Biologist Putrefiers. I also have two of the Death Guard Sorcerers and Terminator Armor. These guys are great. I have one Lord of Virulence. He does have the Droning Enhancement. Uh, as promised before last week, I totally forgot about it, and I, I promise I'll forget about it again this week. And then we also have Typhus for the characters. Uh, battle line, I've got two 10-man bricks of Plague Marines loaded out with all the close combat weapons, uh, heavy plague weapons and robotic weapons. We've got two Death Guard Rhinos, one 10-man uh, uh, squad of uh, Death Guard Cultists. Uh, these are being played by Poxwalkers tonight. It's really the only thing on the list that's not WYSIWYG. We've got one Death Guard Predator Destructor. Uh, we've got 12 Death Shroud Terminators, one six-man and two three-mans, and then two of the War Dog Carnivores. DJ, what are you bringing today? Back as advertised, here is the Canoptic Court that I call the Canoptic Harvest. This is the Necron uh, Canoptic Court that I will be running. Six, two six-man wraiths, three of the Canoptic Doomstalkers, uh, six of the Canoptic Spiders, two mans in each. Then we have si two six-mans of the Canoptic Scarabs, I have two Technomancers that will be leading my wraiths, one of which will have the Infiltration Relic. New addition to the list, I will have a three-man squad of Ophidians to do some uh, secondary game, as well as a ten-man squad of Flayed Ones. And last but surely not least, Lane's favorite model in no, the Necron army. Don't say he it. loves him with all passion. You love him. I love him. The Psychomancer. Only one today, though. Only one today, Just yes. One. Yeah, so I had to make some changes from our last matchup. One of the things that was really difficult was uh, being able to keep up with the secondaries while still playing the game. Uh, with the At the end of the edition, I was a or at the end of the edition, it almost feels like a new edition change with Pariah Nexus. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of Leviathan, I had centipedes yeah. and different points. And then with the point changes, I didn't ch have to change the list very much. So I went over to the Locust Heavies, thought, okay, I can cover, I can do what I was able to do, and I was not able to. So I still kept the heart of the list the same with very few, very little changes, which one was dropping one of the Psychomancers because I need to be able to have stuff that can do actions and uh, Scarabs not always can, can always do them. Also, you needed to drop one because you still wanted to be friends with me and I was really tired of playing against them. 
<laughs> but needless to say, Lane would have still been my friend anyways. He just would have wanted to. There, there was a couple of times that he made threats and said, I'm literally going to bring a hammer with me and crush that model live on camera. No, I'm just going to bring a four assassins. I think I'll hunt them down. <laughs> but the Psychomancer, I still like him because he's able to really, making you take a battle shock into a unit that can use a defensive strat can really help me conserve resources going into those units. So it's mm -hmm. very, very nice. Um, you don't have, I mean, you have Cloud of Flies, which is definitely, uh, definitely going to help uh, for you. I do have full reroll, so it's kind of hand in hand with the other. Armor of Contempt and True Silver Armor are the ones that I really like to try to stop mm -hmm. because that's something I cannot get around otherwise. Uh, but, I mean, and then at the same time, just being able to look at a unit and go, oh, you're OC0 now, I'm going to complete the secondary and not have to do anything is really nice. It's real strong, and I always oblige you by failing my battle shock test. Very much. Hey, you're not the only one. Those guys have done they, – the reason he's been there is because – Tournaments that I've taken him to, he's done work. Mm -hmm. Other people I've played against, he does work. And if I need to uh, do something in a backfield or need to hold an objective in some way, shape, or form, I can send the Scarabs near him and they can get the OC boost because he's a crypt tech. Now, so there's that. The two additions, Ophidian's up-down unit. I don't think I need to explain very much on how, why those are good at secondaries. They deep strike or are they just coming from reserves? Uh, they, they deep strike. So they pick up and they land any they're placed back down anywhere on the table with nine inches. Okay. I don't think they have the deep strike rule. I'll check double check on it. I don't think they have the deep strike rule inherently. I think that it's just their ability that says you may pick them up and then place them down anywhere on the table mm -hmm. outside of nine inches. So it's like they don't I don't think they have deep strike, but they gain everything of the deep strike word when using their up down ability. Right. Um, which they're a unit to start on the table for the home field objectives and stuff like that. I mean, there's no reason not to since they could just be picked up. And then uh, now the flayed ones. Ten of the flayed ones. I was discussing this with Lane beforehand. Uh, when I've run flayed ones in the past, they are very cheap. You know, they are able to infiltrate so I can get them out there. They're a good screen. The one issue I have is they just get sprayed away so easily. So I took the 10 man because a lot of times I notice that the units that are trying to clear them, I'm losing them at five or six models. So this way I still have that few left to either be on the objective or still remain as a screen for that job and that purpose. They have stealth, they're infiltrate, and since they're single wound models, they're a little bit easier to reanimate if you start to ignore them later into the game. Mm -hmm. So um, I do like them. I, I, well, I do like the way they look on paper. We'll see how they look on the table today. You have made one change, and that is that uh, that nice little predator in there. <laughs> right. Let's... I have something that shoots. Look at that. Uh, just looking for something to hold my back, you know, my deployment zone objective, but can still contribute by shooting. Uh, it's either him or another carnivore. I tried the Hellbrut. I don't know if the Hellbrut really is that useful. Uh, it's matchup dependent, uh, but I definitely think um, – the Predator, he shoots pretty well and gets extra AP into infantry, so we'll see. We'll see. I've got to submit my list for the team tournament by, by midnight tonight, so I'll be making a decision today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, literally during the game. Um, yeah, and I am curious on why... I am curious as to... My question is, you... Your army is close combat focused, and it is team focused. And you're putting points into a unit that is a shooting unit that could possibly be picked up by other shooting units and not do so much. So what is the thought process behind putting the points behind a shooting unit and on top of it, a shooting unit that's more based towards anti-infantry as opposed to the anti-tank style option? Yeah, I mean, definitely running off the suggestions of my teammates. Uh, and I think the Predators are strong, but I think if you take two or three of them, they're strong. Just one by itself probably won't contribute a whole lot. Uh, and for just holding my deployment on zone objective, another carnivore would just be better uh, because he's OC8 and um, anything that tries to steal my home field objective would probably be relatively low OC. Uh, so it's probably better to go with the carnivore, but I'll see how he performs today, especially under the shooting matchup. You've, but you're right. If I move him out there, uh, you can just pick him up with some uh, some shooting. So And a big part of it, like you said as well, you've run the triple carnivore before. You're familiar with it. You're comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. This is... It, the list is what it is. It, this is the last piece of it. After today, if you really don't like it, especially going into a matchup that has more shooting with my Canoptic Court, if you don't like it, 
it's not like you're going to be slapping a carnivore in there and go, I don't know what I'm doing. You've run two, you've run three, you know, you have a feel for how they run. Mm-hmm. So, all right, enough talk. Let's get to the game. Lane, out or even? Even. When I'm death guard. Should I call seven? It's not possible. It's a I two. Mean, actually, it is a two. It is even. And I mean, I guess it would. No, no, you really couldn't get a seven out no. of this. because I mean, we tried once that. before. But. Yeah, no, no. All right. You want to deploy first or second? Uh, I guess I'll have you drop first. All right. Then we'll be back after deployment. All right. We are deployed. Some keen eyes may know we have shifted up the terrain. Uh, if you guys are following the GD, GD, sorry, GW tournament packet, this is uh, terrain layout number two that we're going to be using. It's taken me a while. I needed to get that shifted up. So we do have this all shifted up. With that being said, Lane, what is it we are doing here today? We are playing the glorious game of Warhammer 40,000. Uh, the flavor, uh, which today is Dawn of War for our deployment. So, uh, you know, the right way to play Warhammer. <laughs> uh, also, we have our mission rule of prepared positions. Battle line units can use the go to ground and heroic intervention strat for zero CP. My plague marines are uh, battle line. And then the primary mission is just good old vanilla Warhammer taking hold. Uh, five points for every uh, objective we control, up to 15 points uh, per turn. No other shenanigans or rules. It's just five points per objective, up to 15. Yeah, I have uh, no battle line units, so the mission rule will not be doing me any favors today. So, all right, let's talk about deployment. So, for the Necrons, uh, we are ready to move out and shoot. We are kind of positioned up and not really fully hiding, because lane doesn't have a lot of shooting. Uh, the only things that I'm really protecting are the Canoptic Doomstalkers, because I have them in position so that they cannot get shot on turn one. I don't want Lane to go oops all sixes and send a Doomstalker to the shelf. These are the infiltrating rates, which just are up slightly out of my deployment zone so that they're able to hit this objective if need be on turn one. These rates over here can tag this objective turn one. And I did infiltrate the flayed ones here, which are able to go to this objective or over to this objective if I don't want to get aggressive. Uh, we have Scarabs backing up both of the rates. The Psychomancer is in reserve because Lane does have some artillery. And then we have the Ophidians back here, ready to pick up and jump around, you know? And uh, that's really about it. Then everything else just in position to start trying to draw some firing lanes and make take advantage of the fact that Lane does not have a lot of firepower. Very, very, very little, so I should be able to at least control the long-range shooting game uh, until he gets up and starts trying to punch me in the face. All right, uh, and like I said, Psycho Mancer is in strategic reserve because Lane does have a little bit of artillery on the carnivores. All right, Lane, what do you got? Uh, well, we've got a, a rhino here full of 10 Plague Marines and the Biologist Putrefire and a Foul Blight Spawn. Same thing in this rhino. Uh, we've got our carnivore here. We've got our uh, cultists ready here to scout, move into the middle, and then live forever. Uh, Predator is holding my home field uh, deployment zone objective, and then we've got one carnivore over hither. Uh, in Deep Strike, I do have 12 Death Shroud Terminators, so a six-man brick and two three-mans. And then Typhus is on his own. Lord of Virulence is leading the big six-man brick, and then the two uh, Death Guard Sorcerers are leading the three-mans of Death Shroud. All right, so in this game lane, uh, are you looking to go first or second? I would like to go second. Thank you very much. All right, let's let the dice decide. Nope. Nope, you will be going first. First for me. All right, so we don't have, you do have a scout move, correct? Yep. And that's just, we'll uh, tie that in because you just have the, you have the only scout move, which is your little, uh, these little guys right here. Little cultists are going to scooch forward and hope I pull area denial turn one. All right, and we both are playing tactical on the emissions, and all right, I think that's everything. Time to play the game. So I pull recover assets and mark for death. I don't even care what DJ chose for mark for death because <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be able to kill anything turn one. Uh, I guess you do have to pick. Pick for me, DJ. Pick. Okay. I will pick uh, the wraiths, the wraiths, and, uh, you know, I'll be nice and give you a unit. You might be able to kill this squad of scarabs. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right. And uh, then we have recover assets. So... No, this, I'll pick the spiders. All right, fine. Uh, this carnivore scooched up here, and he's going to be recovering assets. My predator is going to stay safe and recover assets there. And then this rhino just advanced up here. It's touching the objective. He's got some cover here, but he's, uh, yeah, other than that, he's he's safe. Nobody's going to shoot him. No also, one's, mind no one's going to shoot him. Uh, yeah. Lane had to shuffle through a bunch of cards right off rip. Call the horde. 
how many did you go through right off rip? Like three before you? Yeah, three, I call the up. horde and defend stronghold. And all all the yeah. stuff that you can't do a turn. Yeah. So that's it for my turn. On to DJ. Looking at extend battle lines and bring it down for turn one. So extend battle lines, relatively easy. And bring it down. We're going to try and pick up this rhino right here. So we started by moving the wraiths up, moving over and then back, and we're able to get four mortal wounds on it. So it's down to six, a good start right there. And then we positioned our Doomstalkers to rain absolute heck onto the Plague Marines uh, that get out, as well as being able to pop open the Rhino. And we got the Spiders here to do the same. So we got a lot of firepower to go into this squad, and hopefully we can just make this entire block go away. Move the Scarabs up to... Uh, be ready to do other things, but mostly we just covered this zone so that there's no bubble here. Even though it looks like there's a wide open gap that Deep Strikers could go in, we actually covered the entire thing. So those Terminators can't drop in over here. Did pick up the Ophidians and ended up putting them right back down. Uh, just want to be able to again cover so there's no Deep Striking. I mean, Lane could go over here and be in a position to go after that objective, which is very plausible and may happen. But I'm okay with that because I have the other side covered. And I've just put this one flight out one here to just kind of push them back so they can't really shoot at me uh, this turn into my flayed ones per se. Then these rays moved up and tagged this objective to finish off for extend battle lines. And uh, that's about it. All right. Let's do some shooting and see if we can't blow up a rhino. Spiders did, did it in. So uh, we were able to pop the rhino. Uh, looked like it was going to go down on the first Doomstalker. Lane spent a command point to re-roll to make the save. Second Doomstalker absolutely whiffed. Also, Lane spent a command point to smoke to so make me minus one to hit. So even with the re-rolls, I uh, was able to get through, but it did make it rough. Even though the Doomstalker, without the minus one, rolled, I think he had three shots, rolled one, two, and three, re-rolled it into one, two, and two. So he just, he, he's not awake yet. But the Spiders were able to finish it off, doing some devastating wounds. And then after they were placed, the Doomstalker went long range down here and picked up a couple more. So we were able to take four out, one in the explosion and three from the Doomstalker. And uh, now it's time to do some charges because everything over there, there's nothing happened over there. Everyone only just moved and, and that's what they did. So we're going to charge over here. We're going to bring these wraiths in. Uh, these Plague Marines will fight first and they do hit kind of hard. So we'll see, see if this is a bad move or not. But uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're going to do some crumping. And before we put the piece of terrain back, we'll talk about it. We lost one Wraith, and one Wraith is down to one wound. And we were able to pick up uh, three in return, was it? Or four? Three. I picked three. up three in return. Yeah. So uh, not bad. Only lost one Wraith out of there. I've gotten smacked significantly hardy by those guys in the past. And uh, that's going to be it. So we will score seven for the turn for extend battle lines. We blew up one vehicle, and we will pass it over to Lane and his turn two. I pulled secure no man's land and bring it down. So bring it down. I'm not going to be able to do this turn. Uh, I'm not real good at shooting vehicles from very far away. So that's not going to happen. And then secure no man's land. I've got um, the carnivore up here. And I just need to take this objective over here, which I feel like I should be able to do. Well, you got the center or... objective right now with the cultists. No, oh, yeah, I got the center. My cultists. Don't forget about the cultists. All right. On to my shooting. Shouldn't didn't do a whole lot uh, after I moved DJ Scooch these guys away where I protect those scarabs. Uh, these guys poured some hot, hot heat from their flamers, but uh, wraiths be wraiths. So only two of them died. So the wraiths are still uh, mostly there. Uh, and then killed one of these guys. Yeah, I don't know about that. And then these guys did shoot the Ophidians away, so at least I picked up one of uh, DJ's. <laughs> Just say it correct. The Sorcerer obliterated the Ophidians. Uh, yeah, I overcharged the Sorcerer shot, and he did. He picked all of the Ophidians by himself. So I rolled 10 for my number of shots. Went pretty well there. Let's charge. Okay, so we're experiencing a weird thing right now where DJ is just making all of his four-up invuln saves. Uh, these guys made their charge into the remaining wraiths, and then I did uh, 25. 20, 20, 21 wounds, and he was making four up saves, and he only failed five of them? Four. Yep. And of course, so he only lost two wraiths in all of them swinging in. I gave him sustained and everything. So I love wraiths, guys. And uh, I resurrected one when he charged, too. Yeah. So uh, this guy did pick up almost all of the flayed ones. There's one little flayed one left, so he swung pretty good there. Here, again, DJ just made all of his saves. So 
these guys and the carnivore and these guys all got to fight first and we still have a wraith and the guy left. So that's, that's what happens, I guess, is that uh, DJ just makes all the saves. So anyways, we did do some destruction, um, but obviously would have preferred to have picked up. I didn't think I was going to pick up this squad, but a couple more would have been nice. And I, I thought I was going to pick up with the squad because I was putting a thousand points into them. So, but that's right. On to DJ's turn. Going into the Necron turn, we have Established Locus and uh, what was the other one I have? Oh, Sabotage. So I don't think I'm going to establish the Locus, but I will try and Sabotage right here with the Scarabs. I have the Mr. Techno here. I don't know if the OC1 is required, but we're there. And then we're going to do a bunch of shooting. So we failed these, these guys' Battle Shock. They're Battle Shock, but they did not desperately break out. Put this right here for them. And they uh, didn't desperately break out, so they got out of combat. Waited till after I moved everything, so that there was no Overwatch from the guys that really have no guns. And then moved up, moved the spiders up there to be able to shoot and charge. Position the Doomstalkers. Right there, right there. Two in the back didn't move, so they'll be hitting on threes. And then these ones over here, this guy over here will be hitting on fours. And then uh, just move the scares there so we can hold the objective if we do shoot everything down. But they're going to try and they're going to sabotage in here. Then uh, move the wraiths. They got Overwatch. We lost one. Now reanimation wise, all we did was heal this wraith back up to full health. We got a wraith back here, and then Lane made it vanish. And then we healed with the techno to bring that wraith back to full health. So we got one back, and it just got eaten in the Overwatch. Then as we flew over, we picked up one Terminator because we had four guys, and we got all four mortal wounds. Uh, then everything else just moved up in position so we can put a lot of heat on this squad of Terminators and, uh, then see where it goes from there. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to be able to do anything about this carnivore this turn. Actually, both carnivores, I don't think I'm going to necessarily be able to do anything about this turn, but we're going to try and pick up a whole bunch of infantry and move from there. All right, let's shoot. So for the turn, uh, shooting wise over here, uh, we did some pretty good damage with the spiders. Uh, there we picked up, I believe, three out of there, and we got a guy that's damaged. It was a six-man squad. Oh, we picked up two. We picked up two with the spiders and their hail of shots. So that's pretty good going into these Terminators, being how tough they are. And most of it was just the devastating wound damage. I don't think Lane failed any of the saves over here yeah. uh, on them. So, yeah, it was just the devastating wounds that were able to do that. Cool. So we're going to have to charge in and finish them off or try to finish them off, at least do some damage, since they don't fight first. These guys are the ones that fight first, everything over here. And uh, these ones we were not able to really hit that hard. Uh, there's still five of the Plague Marines left and two characters. Uh, Lane Pop, Cloud of Smokes, which really, really made a big impact, especially for this guy. So that was a big impact. We're going to have to uh, play into that next turn. And then over here... We hit these guys a little bit, uh, did a little bit of damage with these spiders. Uh, I think I picked up one model and did a wound because we didn't roll too good on the number of shots, but we did get the dev wounds through. And uh, that's where really we're going to charge with those spiders and see if we can't uh, take some damage out over there. So, alrighty. You picked up that carnivore too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. So, out of all that, though, all the stuff that was kind of like medium range and then like tactical, a well-played cloud of flies to keep them alive. Uh, I spent a command point to give them no cover, but it didn't help. On all that stuff, this boss over here just shot down long range and just blasted the carnivore off the table all by his lonesome. So, all right, let's uh, charge and see what we can uh, pick up. So for the mission special rule, uh, Lane was talking to me about this right before I charged. He can heroic intervention, uh, intervention with battle line units for free, such as these Plague Marines. And the carnivore. So I actually had to jump off of my sabotage and charge the plague marines. And the end of the day, I have one scarab base remaining with three wounds. Uh, and uh, yeah, then I was able to charge with the spiders and not get heroically intervened and smacked off the field. Instead, we picked up the squad, leaving just this one character in base contact with me to beat up next turn. Hopefully. Then over here. I just want to clarify. DJ, the reason DJ charged first there, because if he charged first with them, I could have heroically intervened into these guys into the yes, spiders. Yes, 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 that's it. Then over here, we charge the race, charge the spiders, 
charge the, the scarabs that were there as well. Uh, scarabs blew up and did three damage to the carnivore. Probably should have done to the terminators, but I don't know. That was probably a bad call, but whatever. He's got three damage. I'll be happy for it maybe later. Uh, we did get the terminators down to just two models and the character. So that's a good thing. And he's down to one wound. So we're happy there. Uh, we did lose the scarabs in the process, but we only lost the scarabs in the process. So that is going to be it. Uh, we're going to kick it over to Lane in his turn. I pull containment and area denial. Uh, I'm, I'm going for area denial, which is going to be really hard, but it'll be worth it if I can do it because um, it means I kill a lot. Uh, I could contain, but then DJ, that means I'm not doing the kind of scoring I want to do. So I could have dropped in Typhus over there, but then DJ could overwatch and he hits on fives and rerolls with a Doomstalker. So two he goes through and two he goes dies. Through and he dies so. All right, uh, I'm going to do some shooting. We'll see. Well, if we can... a, hold on, hold. There's a lot because oh. you have a talk about this and like. Oh, oh, the fun stuff here, and we'll, we'll just roll this out right now. There's one pistol in this squad on the Biologist Putrefier. It's one shot. It is flat three damage. There are three wounds left on these guys. So if I can kill him with the one shot, then uh, I can charge on these guys and probably wreck them pretty good. So yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna see. We're gonna this is the first shooting attack. Here we go, shooting the pistol. Five lethal hit, neg one. They're dead. Okay, scarabs are killed. Ugh, that feels good. Because uh, if they stick around there, they blow up and do more mortal wounds in my turn. All right, rest of the shooting. Here we go. Uh, shooting did almost nothing. I mean, we got the glorious kill on the last remaining uh, scarab there, but uh, here we picked up one wraith. And the flamer shots from these guys. Uh, and then uh, Typhus did, did pop off and do six mortals here. DJ saved three of them on his feel no pain. Uh, so we did get one of them. So not going to get either of my secondaries. But we are going to kill these wraiths, I hope. All right. And these guys will get to charge. Maybe we'll kill something over here, too. All right. Here we go. Well, I scored nothing on secondaries here uh, because I didn't contain anywhere because I wanted to go for the kills. And to my great disappointment and embarrassment, we got this spider down to two. We finished off the race. Uh, not enough to get area denial, though. So, do I get baby area denial? No, I don't think so. Go ahead and I'll look. Yeah, not within three inches of the center. So, uh, so anyways, um, these guys, uh, these Plague Marines all died to Overwatch. Um, from uh, the Doom Stalker here, so they got picked up there, uh, and then so they couldn't kill a spider because they it killed everything except the characters. And one of the characters died in fighting there. These yeah, guys big charged Overwatch, in. Big Overwatch. These guys charged in and finished off the um, flayed ones. So uh, the good news is I shut DJ out on. No, I don't shut him out on primaries. Oh no, you are, no. I'm going to get a ton on primary, sir. I'm going to get a ton on primary. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> on to your turn. Still sitting on that sabotage, and we're looking at behind enemy lines. So we're going to deal with the Psychomancer, and we'll get over to where he's at. So over here, we just healed up the spiders a little bit, and they stayed in combat. They're going to stay here, and they're able to also shoot at this buddy over here and do some damage. Uh, what we did over here, we auto-passed Battleshock on these guys, didn't want to risk it, and then moved uh, and then reanimated one Wraith to get us our extra five points on primary. And then moving on the objective, and well, we'll try and take care of it, make sure he's gone. Over here, we move the spider out of combat so that we opened up this center field for my Doomstalker Symphony of Destruction. Then over here, we've just moved up these spiders, so if they need to go into the uh, Terminators, we can. And then as well, they also kind of have line of sight down here to shoot if that's something they want to do. And then last but not least, we brought the Psychomancer in beautifully right here. So he's going to try and sabotage this terrain on top of scoring me three points for behind enemy lines. All right, well, let's do some shooting. Successfully picked up this character. So there's just one character remaining in combat with my little old spiders right there. And then over here, we were able to pick up the Terminators and everything is down to critical damage. We got the Carnivore at three wounds to one wound. And then we have the, the what's he called? Uh, Lord of Virulence. Is down to two wounds. So uh, we also battle shocked. <laughs> Psychomancer be crazy. 
got these guys battle shocked in case I decide to do something or charge and not let them overwatch. So a couple little things over there. So now we do have some charges, uh, one charge actually to complete with these guys and see if they can't, uh, can't finish the day and pick up uh, something, one of these two. So, all right, let's charge. Separated the attacks, put so many, put eight attacks onto him, failed to do it. But we're able to pick up the character. The crackback, he was able to pick up one of my spiders and didn't explode. I was hoping it was going to explode and take him out. Uh, over here, we only did one damage, one wound through to do two damage to him. So he's still alive. So uh, that's going to be the end of my turn. We're going to score behind enemy lines for the one unit. And uh, I'm going to make a decision if I even want to keep Sabotage or not. All right, over to lane. I kept area denial, and we got engaged in all fronts. So I did a little bit of shenanigans, moving around a little bit. Advanced the cultists, so we're engaging here. The rhino lets me engage here. These guys let me engage here. These guys are engaging there, so I do get engaged. Neat. Now it comes down to denying the area. So my, my good boy here did pass his battle shock. So I just have to kill both of these spiders, which is going to be a bit of a trick. So we'll see how that goes. Do a little shooting, see what happens. Par for the course, guys. Typhus hurt himself and failed to hurt any of these spiders. So we've got one spider down to one. And this one's at five. Uh, so I guess Typhus is going to try to charge this one. And then that's about all that can happen here. I guess these guys will try to charge here to the, uh, the Psycho because uh, he's got one moon left after our Flamers. And he's sabotaging. And he's sabotaging. So, yep, I'm going to throw a couple charges. Well, we did make our charges. Typhus made his charge here but failed to kill this guy because GJ made a bunch of saves. Uh, but then he swung into my Carnivore which and the, killed my Carnivore. My Carnivore exploded. Did one wound to him, but not enough. He made the feel no pain, but then it did blow up the other spider successfully. And then we made our charge into uh, Psychomancer. So moral victory, the Psychomancer is dead, um, but does not score me any area denial points. And DJ will get 15 on primaries. So still on that sabotage, since Lane blew up my character, and we got engaged on all fronts. So for the engage, we fell back with the spider. And we're able to engage for that quarter because we're just past that line and we're just out of six inches. So there's the spider over there. Then this guy, Doomstalker, will engage over here while still holding the objective marker. And he's going to take some shots at those Terminators. This Doomstalker is going to try and shoot at Typhus. Or might be joined by him, depending. And if we can pick up Typhus before that, then we'll just um, we'll, uh, shoot at these cultists and try and get rid of them. If not, we'll charge the cultists. We pick one up on the move over, and we still got pistols to shoot at them. These guys are battle shock, but I mean, it doesn't mean we can't charge. And then over here, the spiders moved into the building, into the train, so they're going to sabotage over here and give me engage on this corner. So that's going to be it. Let's do some shooting. So we just rolled the uh, fight phase in because there wasn't very much from it. These two doom stalkers both put their big cannons into Typhus. And it took both of them to finally get a wound through and pick Typhus up. Then we did some gauze flares and the pistols and then charged to finish off the cultists with the wraiths. And then last but not least was this Doomstalker who picked up all three of the Terminators. So we did get Max on Engage and uh, we're going to probably get the Sabotage over here. All right, over to Lane in his turn five. The top, of top of five, my last turn. I realized that I so I did manage to finally get area denial. Uh, behind the lines, the wizard scooted over there. And then these uh, guys moved up here. The predator. Remember I was talking about whether I was deciding whether or not I'm going to take the predator? The answer is no, guys. A single predator, not great. Uh, a bunch of them, the dice average up. But he shot everything into the spider here. Did nothing. No damage. We can use a CP reroll on the wound roll. Um, so he has done functionally no damage throughout the game. And he's been shooting oh, wow. Carnivore. Yeah, that's I, I true. I don't think he's gotten any No, hurt. he has not done any damage at all. So not I'll to... take another carnivore for the team tournament. Wow. But uh, that's, that wraps me up there. So uh, uh, no charges or anything. <laughs> uh, just a little bit of failed shooting. And DJ's final turn. So for the final Necron turn, uh, we had Cleanse and Mark for Death. Just kind of rolled this through. So Cleanse-wise... Spider's cleansed over here, so we can move the Doomstalker out. 
to shoot at that rhino that was on the home field objective marker. And then over yonder, we had two Doomstalkers over here that shot at the rhino as well. And we were able to pick that guy up, especially with all the move arounds and all that jazz. So, and then with the spider was able to cleanse over there. So that gave us uh, 15 on primary and the big push on seconders. The final score, Necrons 84 to a Death Guard 70. All right. Well, that about wraps it up. Meet us over on the post game. We'll talk to you all there. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again soon.